All right, everybody, welcome back to the NFA Review Channel, SHOT Show 2017. We're at the Strategic Arms Corp booth. Uh, we're going to kind of focus on uh, Armalite and uh, McMillan, McMillan today. I have uh, Hunter and Jeremy here, and they're going to kind of cover the products with me here. So we're going to start with the Alias, which is a pretty badass looking rifle. Um, those of you who follow my channel know that I do a lot of reviews on takedown rifles. And this one's pretty damn interesting. And uh, obviously, it's NFA as well. So, uh, Jeremy, if you want to take the lead on this one. We should rename it as the nose bleeder. Uh, <laughs> yeah. just about knock me out. Um, so yeah, this rifle was built. Uh, we had a, a contract from a foreign national country mm -hmm. uh, ask us to do this type of contract. Uh, concealable, yet modular at the same token. Uh, so it's got an 11 and a half inch barrel with, it, with a uh, suppressor. It's a uh, backwards thread suppressor, I guess would be the best way of putting it. But suppressor goes in the bag, stock goes onto the gun. It's got a 1913 on the side here. Break it open, stock comes off, slides onto the back end, and then locks into place, and you're ready to go. Looks like something straight out of James Bond. It is a <laughs> impressive shooter. Um, we've Absolutely. taken it out to, uh, at range day, we were punching 960 uh, clay birds before anybody really got there. And uh, wow. out in Phoenix, we were taking it out to 11, 11 to 1400. You um, know, it's- 12 and a half inch, right? Yeah, 11 and a half, 12. I was glad to see the McMillan name behind a takedown rifle. Um, some of the takedown rifles can't hold accuracy guarantees because of the way they are. Um, Hunter was telling me that these guns don't leave the factory unless they shoot under half a minute. Yep, so that's uh, McMillan. And so when we acquired, uh, first it was Surgeon and AWC and all that jazz. So then when we got a hold of McMillan, um, we took some of the features that Surgeon was known for and added it into the McMillan brand. Uh, so the McMillan actions and the Surgeon actions are built the same place, same machines, different specs to a point. Uh, but yeah, they, every McMillan and Surgeon is test fired for accuracy and functionality, but yes, uh, half MOA or better is the standard within the two brands. They are shooters. And that trigger is sweet. I don't know what it's breaking at, but it feels like it's like it's a pound. It's definitely a light Maybe trigger. Maybe under a pound. Um, We'll get some close-ups of it later, but mm -hmm. it's got a uh, forward and backward adjustability. I saw that, I saw that. Also a left and right cant, and can be tuned down and up and wait for your spec, depending on how you want it. Uh, same thing with the stock, it's got an adjustable cheek weld, overall length of pull. But again, once this is set, and you need to take, unlike you know some of the fixed stocks where the stock either has to come off or fold, or something has to be adjusted to take the bolt out, this completely comes off, take the bolt out, put it all on the side, take the suppressor off, put it on the side of its bag, and you go to town. Now this thing is heavy. It's oh, yeah. one <laughs> giant block of metal. It's really heavy. I don't know the weight. Yeah, I'm but not sure either, but it's it's, it's nice to see a takedown gun that's like way over-engineered, and that's where they're gonna get a lot of their accuracy claims from, because there is no flex in this thing. No. It's like one giant block of metal. And uh, a lot of people shoot it, like they look at it and it, you know, it kind of looks like this Frankenstein gun. Right. Um, but then they shoot it and they're one, they're impressed by the recoil reduction. Mm -hmm. They're super impressed yeah. by the accuracy. And yeah. they just weren't expecting that type of accuracy mm -hmm. and modularity from a rifle that is a takedown. Yeah. So, so hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get to take a bat at this thing. Absolutely. On uh, the NFA Review Channel, see what it can do. We'll bring it out to Aries and punch some steel with it. Could be a good time. Yeah. All right. Now this next toy here, I asked Hunter. I said, uh, "What what two guns should we show off?" And he immediately went straight to the uh, SAS Mark II chambered and 260. So I'm gonna let let you take. Absolutely. This right here is is just a beast in its own. Um, what we did is we originally have the Mark I SAS, which is uh, in 308, and we had a PRC, which was in 260. Um, but we decided to get a little wild this year with the PRS games and all that other stuff coming out this year. And we came up with the SAS Mark II. Um, we have it in 260 and 308, but what we've done is we got rid of the really, uh, the really long full-length Picatinny quad rail. Um, super heavy and bulky, um, added a lot of weight. 
We also changed the gas system. It's a lot easier to uh, switch from suppressed to uh, unsuppressed unlike the other one. You had to turn it all the way almost to full rotation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also really low profile now, so if you wanted to swap rails, you would be able to with mm -hmm. no problem. Um, we added a... Uh, I like that, where you can actually absolutely. adjust it's it. Absolutely, it's just super easy to adjust instead of oh, wow. the other one. Yeah. Um, we added a uh, PSR comp on it. It's basically a quick thread uh, for your eight, attachment for, your for our AWC cans. AWC cans yeah. um, this one has a new ambidextrous safety, where the other one didn't have one. Uh, this still has the PSR or PRS mackerel stock. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but this rifle is a tack driver. I mean, this one is a 260. Um, we're pretty big fans of that. We're starting to build those mm -hmm. all over in the long range games, whether it's gas gun series or uh, PRS series on bolt guns. Is there a guarantee on the arm lights? So this particular gun uh, on the Sasmar 2 is half MOA. Wow. Yeah, and this um, this so gun to will be do it. with that with the SAS Mark II. Uh, it'll have a match grade barrel. It also has a beefed up upper. Mm -hmm. So whereas most upper receivers are going to end here, you can kind of see oh, yeah. where it beefs up, and yeah. then it actually continues fully into here. Oh, okay. So the barrel is recessing into the upper to mitigate flex between the, the upper and harmonics the are yeah. different than yeah. a, a standard. But it, still, any AR barrel will go in there. Um, and, it's, and it uses the barrel nut that we supply. And that's just on the Mark II? It's just on the Mark II. Interesting. And eventually we'll bring it into the rest of the line. Mm -hmm. um, the rifle was built around a, a government entity asking for it. Um, I'm pretty impressed with it, man. Uh, it's cut and went pretty well. Oh, yeah. The goal is to get, I mean, the goal is to get it down the half MOA. Uh, right now our testing is in the half to a little over a half. Uh, but it's definitely will be an it'll at least be an MOA gun. Um, we're experimenting with different timed gas systems, mm -hmm. uh, trying to find some accuracy, more accuracy out of it. But it's it's definitely a tack driver. It'll come with a Timony trigger in it, um, ambidextrous charging handle. It's uh, going to be a beast. Price point range, you think? Still trying to be decided <laughs> okay. on right now, but it's probably around the same as the, the original SAS. Oh, okay, so free upgrades. So, yep. Which is awesome. That is and, awesome. Um, Looking at so right now it's going to come in 260 and 308. Uh, don't be shocked if you see some uh, some creeds coming in there. Yes. I'll leave the uh, the designation of whether it'll be six creed or six five, or both. Uh, could be both. But uh, six six five would shoot like a pussy cat out there in this oh, thing. Yeah. And apparently the six creed is even even better. better. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time, guys. Um, hopefully we'll have a lot more of these products on my channel. As you guys know, we already did the review on the uh, Turbodyne 50 suppressor and the Armalite AR50 A1, and uh, we still have the um, 30, uh, 338 can for you guys soon. We're going to be filming that soon, and the AR30 338 rifle from Armalite. So, uh, yeah, well, we're going to have to divvy up some AWC cans, some surgeon rifles down the road, and uh, see if the accuracy claims hold up. Hey, we're doing what we can, and uh, even if they're not, right, we're, we're, we want to know what it's shooting so we right. can, at the end of the day, so you and I have had these conversations, if you can't, if you're not willing to know where your product's right. maxing out at, right. pack up and leave. I want right. to know where where it's at and how we can improve. Squeeze and, uh, everything out of it you can. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what that's what's going to take to continue to succeed in this game. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time, guys. Thanks, thanks guys. guys. Appreciate All right. it. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Plenty more videos coming. See you next time. <laughs> Your eyes are all watering and shit. God damn, that'll fucking hurt. <laughs> that's why you're supposed to have non... Oh. Damn. That's, I mean, you... Awesome there, that was like a Mike Tyson hit with that thing. You did. If it was Mike Tyson, I'd be out. Did you see that? Dude, if that was not... Been if that was metal, water, I'm done. Like, yeah. That's pretty squishy. Yeah, right. Are you it's recording? Okay. It's, it's not really squishy, but that would have been... Like, I was going to say, you want to try it? Negative, I'm good. <laughs> oh. I'm out. We can hook you up, buddy. Yeah, you guys totally missed that. Jeremy just totally smacked himself oh, in the face with that thing. It's pretty hard. It's pretty brutal, man. I was fully prepared for a nosebleed. Yeah.